Hello champs, I hope you all are doing great. My name is Biswajit, I am your botany teacher. Today we are going to discuss a chapter from class 12th and the chapter is strategies for enhancement of food products. This chapter has got both botany and zoology portions and here I am going to discuss the botany portion. Before beginning this lecture, let me tell you one thing that this chapter is very easy and information based so you can learn it by your own, there is no problem in that. But there is a topic which is known as tissue culture and that topic is quite conceptual. Okay, so to have proper understanding of that chapter, you can watch this lecture and I hope your preparation for NEET is going well and I, and I hope your family members are also fine. Uh, I wish all the very best for your future, for your NEET exam, for everything. I wish all the very best to you. So the topics which we are going to cover today are what is plant breeding? What are the, what are the different steps we follow in the process of plant breeding or in the program of plant breeding? How the plant breed, breeding is done to increase the yield, to increase the resistance against pathogens, to increase the resistance against insects or pests. Then we will talk about SCP that is single cell protein and finally we are going to discuss about the tissue culture. All of us know very well that over the period of time the medical science field has developed a lot and because of that the death rate of human population has decreased. However, the birth rate has not decreased, it has increased and I can say that is I, and that is why I can say that the human population size is increasing day by day year after year. So to meet the requirement of food for this by this increasing human population we can follow few things okay what are those one we can follow better management practices during cultivation okay second we can increase the acreage that is that means the area for cultivation okay we can also follow plant breeding so these are some of the few things which can be done to increase the yield to increase the yield and when the yield of the crop plants increases the food required by the human population will be satisfied okay so when we follow better management practices or increase in the yield, acreage that will cause the increase in the yield but the increase in the yield when we follow this one or this one is to a limited extent and that is why if we follow this one or this one that will no doubt increase in the yield but that will not fulfill the requirement of food by this increasing population so how can we need meet the requirement of food by the uh, by the increasing human population by following plant breeding why and how because plant breeding increases the yield to a very large extent to a very large extent Okay, and the green revolution which took place in India was mainly based or I can say based on plant breeding to a large extent. Okay, so this green revolution was based on plant breeding to a large extent in which we developed some plants like wheat, rice, maize which were high yielding and which were resistance against pathogens or diseases. Okay, so you may ask me, sir, what is plant breeding then? Plant breeding is basically a process in which we perform some manipulations in the plants. And those manipulations are done purposefully. So what are the purposes for these manipulations? To make the plants better suited for cultivation in different parts of area, different parts of India or different, uh, different areas of uh, in the different areas of the across the globe and the second purpose is to make the yield high that means for better yield and the third purpose is to make the plants resistant against pathogens or to make the plants disease resistant okay so these are the these are some of the uh, purposes behind the manipulations and these manipulations which are done to to achieve this one, this one or this one is known as plant breeding. Okay. And when we talk about plant breeding, this is not a recent process. Okay. This has been used by human, human, human population since the beginning of human civilization. 
and the recorded evidences the recorded evidences of plant breeding dates back to 9000 to 11000 years back okay that means this plant breeding is not a recent process it has been used by human population from very from the very beginning of the from the very beginning of the human civilization okay and when we talk about the plant breeding and to be more specific classical plant breeding when we when we talk about classical plant breeding it involves the hybridization of two parents okay and this hybridization can also be called as crossing so the first thing which we do in the classical plant breeding is crossing or hybridization of the two parents and those parents will be pure line and when i say pure line that means they will be homozygous okay so first thing what we do in the classical plant breeding is crossing or the hybridization of the two parents then after the crossing or hybridization we artificially do the selection of the progenies okay and that will result in the formation of new plants which will have the desirable traits the and the desirable traits some of the examples of the desirable traits will be higher yield okay higher nutrient value and resistance against the diseases or pathogens okay and with the advancement in genetics molecular biology tissue culture the plant breeding is now increasingly being carried out uh, by using molecular genetic tools okay that means i can say that the plant breeding is uh, in the process of plant breeding in the process in the program of plant breeding now we are using various molecular genetics tools okay now this plant breeding so where do, where do we perform this plant breeding and who is going to perform this plant breeding i would say this plant breeding is carried out by both government institutions as well as this is also carried out by the commercial companies and whenever we do whenever we do plant breeding we do it in a very systematic way in a very systematic way okay now so when we talk about the plant breeding plant breeding so what are the traits or characters which we 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 try to incorporate in the crop plants during the process of plant breeding first increase in the yield and increase in the quality that means we try to increase the quantity as well as quality and this is the first and this is the first trait which we try to incorporate in, in our crop plant the second thing is which we try to introduce in the uh, plant during plant breeding is to increase the tolerance to environmental stresses like salinity extreme temperatures and drought third to make the plants resistant to pathogens and the pathogens are basically microbes for example viruses fungi bacteria okay and to make it and to increase the tolerance to insects pests would be on, on our list too that means to increase the tolerance against insect or pest that is also our priority but the first priority is to increase the yield and to improve the quality of the crop plant okay so these are the different traits which we try to incorporate in a plant during the process of during the program of plant breeding okay so what are the different steps which we follow in the process of plant breeding okay so from this portion the very first question which may come in your exam is what is the sequence of the steps which we follow in the process of plant breeding so the first step which, which we follow in the process of plant breeding is collection of germplasm okay and the second step is the cross hybridization among the selected parents okay and the third uh, sorry okay sorry the first step is collection of germplasm second step is evaluation and selection of the parents and third step is cross hybridization among the selected parents and fourth step is selection and testing of the superior recombinants and fifth step is testing release commercialization of new cultivars okay so these are the different steps which we follow during the process of plant breeding okay so you have to remember the sequence so let us try to understand each and every step in detail okay so what do you understand by germplasm okay for germplasm we can also use the term variability over here okay so germplasm is nothing but the 
entire collection of plants or seed even the embryos having all the diverse alleles of all genes in a given plant of a given crop plant is called as germplasm okay let me give you one example suppose a plant has three types of genes how many genes three genes three different types of genes are there okay so i am taking some plants over here okay so suppose this is a plant okay this is another plant of the same species okay this is another plant same species these are different plants of same species same species and here i'm going to take three genes over here okay three genes over here and the genes are a b and c a b c these are the genes okay so suppose this one has gene a a1 okay and if the plant is if the suppose the plant is diploid so it will have a suppose this is having a1 a3 okay and suppose b b2 b3 okay and c1 c2 like this and what about the second plant the second plant is having a2 a2 okay and this one is also having b2 b2 okay and suppose this this one is having c3 c3 like this okay and suppose uh suppose this plant is having a4 a3 and this was this one is having b2 b3 and this one is having c1 c3 okay and suppose this plant is having a1 a4 okay and suppose this plant is having b1 b2 okay and this one is having c2 c3 like this so these are different plants these are different plants okay so here you can see we have three different types of genes a b c how many different types of alleles are present in case of a we are having a1 a, a2 a3 a4 so a has having four different alleles four different alleles what about b b has got three different types of alleles and c also has got three different types of alleles c1 c2 c3 okay so if i take only this plant if i take only this plant then i am having three different types three different types of genes that means all the genes are present over here but do i have all the alleles of the all the genes no for gene a only i am having two different alleles a1 a3 but i should have all the four different types of alleles for gene a okay what about b this plant has only two alleles of this gene b but the b has total three different types of alleles so i cannot take this one okay likewise c has got three different types of alleles okay but here i am having only two types of alleles so to have to have all the all the genes and all the different types of alleles of all plants i will i will collect i will take all these all these plants so when i take when i take all these plants together then i will say i am taking all the genes a b c all the genes i am taking and all the different types of possible alleles present in the plants are present over here okay and this and these plants and these plants will be called as germplasm so germplasm is basically collection collection of what collection of plants or seeds collection of what collection of plants or seeds okay and those plants or seeds will have all the all the different types of alleles of all genes those collected plants or seeds will be called as germplasm okay and that germplasm is also known as variability okay and this collection of germplasm is the backbone of backbone or root of any plant breeding program this is the backbone that means if you want to develop a plant if you want to create a plant not create develop a plant which will be having the best uh, best combination of qualities then we should have the germplasm we should have the variability okay and that that, that will help us to develop or uh, de develop or develop a plant with with the best combination of qualities or traits and once we we collect the germplasm once we collect the germplasm we are going to evaluate and select the parents that means i am going to select some of the plants from this germplasm as parents okay so we have to evaluate and select the parents 
ओके वाई डू वी हैव टू इवाल्यूट एंड सेलेक्ट दी पेंट्स बिकॉज सपोज आई वॉन्ट टू टेक सम प्लांट विच इज ड्रॉफ इन नेचर ओके आई वॉन्ट टू टेक सम प्लांट विच आई आई नीड टू डेवलप ए प्लांट विच इज ड्रॉफ इन नेचर सो सपोज हियर आई एम टेकिंग टू प्लांट ओके दिस इज वन प्लांट एंड दिस इज ऑल्सो अनदर प्लांट सो दीज आर टू प्लांट्स ओके एंड टू एक्सप्लेन यू लेट मी राइट ओवर हियर दैट सपोज इन दिस केस द जीनो टाइप इज कैपिटल डिस small t and the, here the genotype is small t small t so this will be dwarf this is this should be tall this should be tall but this plant is not tall this is dwarf okay so this is both are both plants are dwarf both plants are dwarf but this is genetically also dwarf and this is genetically not dwarf this is genetically tall right so why uh, so this dwarf plant dwarfness is a phenotype dwarfness is a phenotype so the phenotype may be due to genotype or it may also be due to the environment so to understand or to check whether the phenotype which we want in a plant is due to the environment or due to the genotype we we have to evaluate that one we have to evaluate that one and in this case even though the genotype is for tallness but the phenotype is dwarf why because the soil for example the soil in which this plant is grown is is having less nutrient and because of the presence of less nutrient in the soil the plant will not grow properly and that is why the plant will be dwarf okay but the but it genotypically it is tall so whenever we are having the germplasm we will try to evaluate that whether the phenotype which we are uh, which we uh, want to incorporate in a plant that phenotype is due to the due to the environment or because of the genes we will first of all evaluate that one okay and once we evaluate that one and we uh, that one we will select the parents we will select the parents okay and we will try to make the plants uh, make the parents make the parents what pure line but it is not always possible but it is not always possible that we can make uh, make the plant pure line that is homogeneous all the time okay and that is why i have written over here pure lines are created whenever desirable and possible whenever desirable and possible why i uh, why i have written over here uh, desirable because in some cases the heterozygous condition is more better is better than the homogeneous condition okay which is known as hybrid vigor or heterosis right so if the homogeneous condition is desirable and if we can make the if we can make the uh, plant homogeneous then only we will we will make the plant pure line otherwise we will we will keep uh, we will take the plant in the in heterogeneous condition that won't be a problem okay so we have collected the germplasm then we have selected the parents okay now we will hybridize the selected parents okay and for hybridization hybridization we will follow some basic steps what are the basic steps first is we have to we have to emasculate the plant if the flower is if the flowering plant is bisexual we have to emasculate the plant that is emasculation what is emasculation the removal of the male part that is the anther anther from the flower is known as emasculation then we have to bag the plant then we have to bag the plant okay and when we emasculate the plant the emas emasculate a flower the flower will be female flower okay so the female flower if it is unisexual or if the emasculated flower which acts as a female flower have to be bagged by some covering which will prevent the pollination by some undesirable undesirable uh, poll pollen grains okay then we have to unbag it then we have to artificially hybridize it with the pollen grain obtained from the desirable plant then we have to rebag it okay so these are the different steps which we follow during the process of cross hybridization okay so what are the different steps the different steps are i i'm writing over here emasculation this is removal of what this is removal of male part okay that is the anther fertile part of the stamen is fert, uh, anther okay then we then we perform bagging okay then we dust the pollen grain artificially on the stigma so this is dusting of pollen grain dusting of pollen grain artificially on the stigma pg is pollen grain and finally we we rebag it rebagging so these are the steps which we follow during the process of 
वट क्रॉस हाइब्रिडाइजेशन और हाइब्रिडाइजेशन एक्सपेरिमेंट ओके एंड दिस क्रॉस हाइब्रिडाइजन एक्सपेरिमेंट इज वेरी टाइम कंज्यूमिंग दिस इज वेरी वेरी टाइम कंज्यूमिंग ओके एंड दिस इज वेरी हार्ड डिफिकल्ट वेरी डिफिकल्ट एंड वेन वी परफॉर्म क्रॉस हाइब्रेशन इट इज नॉट ऑलवेज नेसेसरी दैट द ट्रेड्स विच वी वॉन्ट इन द प्लांट टू कम टूगेदर इट इज नॉट नेसेसरी दैट द प्लांट विल हैव ऑल दोज all all those characters okay it is not necessary so it is not necessary that the hybrids do combine the desirable characters usually only one in few hundred to thousand crosses show the desirable character combinations that means when we perform when we perform one or few hundred to thousand crosses very few, very few number of very there is very less chances of the plant having desirable characters or desirable combinations and that is why we normally do not follow this cross hybridization experiment okay why because of three reasons one time consuming second very hard difficult third even if we perform the hybridization experiment successfully still it is not necessary that the plant which we will we will obtain after the process of cross hybridization will have the combination of the desirable characters it is not necessary okay that is why this classical plant breeding technique is not followed we follow tissue culture we follow tissue culture okay and then and suppose we have done we have done the uh, uh, cross hybridization between the selected parents successfully and after that we will try to find out the progenies which will have the combination of the desirable characters and those plants which will have the Uh, combination of the des desirable characters will be called as superior recombinants superior recombinants okay so this this step is crucial to the success of plant breeding okay and this requires careful scientific evaluation of the progenies okay and the plants that are superior to both parents both parents are obtained so once we do the once we do the cross hybridization between the two parents it is not necessary that all the progenies will have the desirable combination of characters no, it is not necessary so among the among the obtained progenies we will try to find out in which plants in which plants the des desirable characters combinations are present over there okay we will try to find out that. and that plant which will have the um, character good characters from parent one and good characters from parent two will will be considered as superior to both parent one as well as parent two okay now the and once we get the superior recombinant we will try to self pollinate that plant okay for several generation so that so that that plant will become homozygous okay and if the plant will become homozygous for those characters then that character will not segregate over generations okay now so once we do once we select the progenies which are having the superior characters as uh, as compared to both parents then we are going to test those parents uh, th those progenies 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 and finally we will release that plant okay if that plant succeeds in the testing okay so what do we do then so the those uh, recombinant plants will be will be evaluated for their yield and other agronomic traits or qualities and disease resistance etc firstly in the research field so the test is first done in the research field for what for yield how much yield is it is giving okay whether this plant is resistant to disease or not okay what are the nutri nutrient quality of the plant like that okay so these are the different characters which we consider during the test of the recombinant and the test is first done in the research field okay and after that after research, if the plant uh, qualifies uh, in the test of research field then we will uh, do the do the same test in the farmers field then we will do the test in the farmers field first we do the test in the research field then we do that in farmers field okay and in the research field and in the research field when we do the test we do the test under ideal condition okay that means under ideal conditions in which proper amount of fertilizer will be given proper irrigation will be done okay and other other uh, crop management practices will be done 
ओके वेन इन दी वेर इन दी रिसर्च फील्ड वेन ड्यूरिंग द प्रोसेस ऑफ इवेल्युएशन और दी टेस्टिंग ऑफ द प्लांट ओके एंड इफ द इवेल्युएटेड प्लांट इज गेट्स क्वालिफाइड देन इट विल बी इट विल बी ग्रोन इन दी फार्मर्स फील्ड ओके एंड इन फार्मर्स फील्ड एटलीस्ट फॉर थ्री ग्रोइंग सीजन not for only one season at least for mi minimum for three growing seasons and do you, and we grow those plants for minimum for three growing seasons at different parts different locations in the country and if if the plant succeeds to grow well in different parts of a country okay successfully then that plant will be selected then that plant will be selected okay and that plant will, uh, once the plant is selected the seeds will be obtained from those plants and that those seeds will be uh, those uh, those seeds will be sold uh, sold okay and, that, and those uh, seeds will be used by different farmers okay so these are the different steps which we follow in the process of plant breeding okay so plant breeding is basically a purposeful 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 manipulation process in the plant species okay and this plant breeding is not a recent uh, recent technique it has been used by the human population since the very beginning of the human civilization okay and the various steps which we follow in the plant breeding are first of all we collect the germplasm second we select the parents third we cross hybridize between the selected parents then we select the progenies which will be having the uh, which will be having the desirable traits and once the progenies uh, progenies are uh, with the, with the desirable traits are obtained we we test release and commercialize the new cultivar okay we test the, those plants okay now so in there are some informations which are given in the ncert india is mainly an agricultural country everybody knows this okay and agriculture in india agriculture in india approximately 33% of gdp is by agriculture okay and about about 62% of population uh, empl is employed by the agriculture okay so these are some data you have to remember okay so 33% of what gdp is by is is contributed by agriculture okay and the agriculture employs about 62% of indian population okay after indian uh, independence one of the main challenges facing the country was the pro of producing the enough food for increasing population we have already discussed this one okay as only limited land land is fit for cultivation india has to strive to increase yield per unit area from existing land farm you know this one okay the development of several high yielding varieties of wheat rice in mid 1960s as a result of various plant breeding techniques led to dramatic increase in the food production in the country and this is often referred to as green revolution so when the green, when the green revolution took place in the mid 1960s in the mid 1960s okay in which we grew some plants like rice wheat maize etc okay now so what about wheat and rice what about wheat and rice okay so over the time period of 1960s to 2000 how the how the yield of wheat has increased how the yield of rice has increased we are going to discuss that one okay so in 1960 in 1960 the wheat production in 1960 the wheat production was about 11 million tons 11 million tons but in the year 2000 it increased to 75 millions that means about seven times about seven seven times the yield of the wheat has increased okay from 1962 to 2000 what about rice then what about rice then so in in 1960 the rice production was about 33 million tons and in 2000 it increased to 89. 5 million tons that means about about uh, 90 million million tons okay so you can see how the production or the yield of wheat and rice has increased over the period of uh, over a small time period 40 years time period okay and this increase in the yield of wheat and rice was due to the development of what semi dwarf varieties of wheat and rice okay so you have to remember some some of the examples of 
they made dwarf varieties of wheat and rice okay it was it was norman e borlog who developed who developed for the first time semi dwarf variety of wheat who developed for the first time semi dwarf variety of wheat where did he develop this semi dwarf variety of wheat in the in the at the international center for wheat and maize improvement in mexico so in mexico in mexico an institute was there that name the name was international center for wheat and maize improvement okay and there norman who 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 who, who is a nobel laureate okay uh, who uh, he developed semi dwarf variety of wheat okay and in 1963 in 1963 several varieties of several several varieties of semi dwarf varieties like sonalika kanel kalyan sona okay they were they were uh, introduced in different wheat uh, different areas of india where wheat is basically grown okay so when when was sonalika kalyan sona and other high yielding uh, high yielding semi dwarf variety of wheat were introduced in different areas uh, different areas uh, different um, areas of india where uh, wheat is grown in the year 1963 okay so this is about semi dwarf variety of wheat okay it was for the first time developed by norman where in mexico okay when was the semi dwarf variety of wheat was introduced in india 1963 what are the examples sonalika kalyan kalyan sona what about what about the semi dwarf variety of rice then okay so the semi dwarf variety of rice was developed in uh, some of the examples of semi dwarf, semi dwarf variety are ir8 okay ir8 okay and tn1 ir8 and tn1 so these two are these two are semi dwarf varieties of what rice okay and this semi dwarf variety of rice that is ir8 was in, was developed in philippines okay at ir ri okay and this tn1 was developed at taiwan okay so when the semi dwarf variety of rice uh, were introduced in india in 1966 so semi dwarf variety of wheat was introduced in 1963 and semi dwarf variety of rice was introduced in india in 1966 okay so these are and some of the examples of some of the examples of semi dwarf variety of rice rice are jaya and ratna jaya and ratna and these the, the good thing about jaya and ratna are they are developed in india they are developed in india okay jaya ratna sonalika kalyan sona semi dwarf variety of wheat okay jaya ratna they are semi dwarf variety of rice okay now now let's talk about sugar cane let's talk about sugar cane okay so here i'm going to take uh, consider two different types of sugar cane okay one is one is saccharum barberry one is saccharum barberry the Se second one is saccharum officinarum okay saccharum barberry has less yield saccharum barberry has less yield okay but it ca it can tolerate saccharum barberry just a minute saccharum barberry has less yield low yield that means it will produce less amount of sugar okay but it can tolerate low temperature it can be grown in low temperature okay and we know very well that as compared to south india north india is little uh, little uh, colder okay so this saccharum barberry was originally grown from uh, in the north india so north indian north indian sugar uh, su sugarcane example is saccharum barberry it has poor sugar content that means yield is less but it can tolerate low temperature it can be grown at under low temperature whereas in south india in south india uh, another uh, another sugarcane was grown and the sugarcane was uh, saccharum officinarum and it it had higher sugar cane, sugar sugar yield okay and when will be the higher sugar yield if the thickness of the stem is more okay so it is having thickest uh, thicker stem and it is having thinner stem okay but the problem with this saccharum officinarum is that it cannot be grown under low temperature okay so 
finally finally some scientists they successfully developed a plant by cross hybridizing these two plants and which which allowed the, uh, which uh, allowed uh, us to develop such plants which will be having thick stems okay thick stem that means it will be having more sugar content and it and those plants also were able to grow in the no, in the north india part okay so this was about sugar cane what about millet hybrid maize jowar bajra have been successfully developed in india hybrid uh, hybrid breeding have been uh, have led to the development of several high yielding varieties uh, re varieties resistant to water stress okay now now so we have studied how do we perform plant breeding to increase in the yield okay now we are going to discuss how do we perform plant breeding to develop plants which will be resistant to diseases why why should we perform uh, plant breeding to increase in the increase the resistance against disease because of a very simple reason because the disease the disease or the pathogens they reduce the yield to a great extent sometimes the loss of the yield due to the pathogens or disease it can be up to 20 to 30 percent and sometimes and sometimes even the total total yield will be destroyed and 20 to 30 percent is also not a small amount right so because of the pathogens or disease because the decrease in the yield or the loss of the yield is very high considerable amount that is why we cannot we cannot uh, afford to afford to allow the disease disease uh, or pathogens to attack the crop plants and that is why we will we will develop such plants which will be resistant to the pathogens or diseases and ultimately that will increase in the yield okay so in this situation the breeding and development of cultivars are resistant, resistant to disease enhances the food production so in this case when the disease when the loss of the yield is due to is due to pathogens so if we if we develop if we develop plants which which are resistant to diseases that will ultimately cause in the food production or yield okay and now and uh, no, normally normally uh, see the disease is due to pathogens and the pathogens may belong to virus they may, they may be bacteria they may be fungus okay so to prevent to to prevent the uh, uh, pathogens to attack attack the plants we use different uh, chemicals like fungicide fungicide for fungus bactericide for bacteria but when we use fungicide and bactericides they are basically chemicals and we should not use chemicals so to avoid the use of avoid the use of fungicides and bacteri bactericides that is the chemicals we can we can develop resistant plants so if we develop resistant plants even though the bacteria and the fun fun fungi the disease causing bacteria fungi they come they will not infect the plant and the yield will not take risk okay so and that is why it is written that this this one that means the plant breeding for disease resistant this one will help us to reduce the dependence on the use of fungicide and bactericide okay and the resistance of the host plant is the ability to prevent the pathogen from causing disease and it is determined by the genetic con constitution of host plant okay that means whether the plant will be resistant to a disease causing bacteria or fungi or virus that will be decided by the genes or genotype present in the host plant plant okay so before breeding uh, breed, breeding is undertaken it is important to know that uh, not uh, know, uh, know about the causative organism and the mode of transmission that means when we are sorry when we are planning to perform plant breeding to develop a plant which will be resistant to disease before doing that we must know that which organism is responsible for causing that disease okay so we we must know that okay and some of the diseases caused by so and the diseases are caused by what uh, fun, uh, and some of the examples are given here okay uh, given here so the uh, rust disease is caused by fungi and the example is given here brown rust of wheat this is also given in the uh, in the class 11th okay so the brown brown rust of wheat is due to fungi is due to fungi okay red rot of sugar cane late blight of potato they are also because of fungi so these three diseases are due to fungi okay now now uh, bacteria may also cause diseases bacteria may also cause diseases so what are the examples of the diseases uh, which are caused by bacteria it is the black rot 
ब्लैक रॉड ऑफ क्रूसिफर्स एंड द डिजीजेस आर ऑल्सो कॉज्ड बाय वट ऑल्सो कॉज्ड बाय वायरसेस एंड द एग्जांपल इज टोबैको मोजा टोबैको मोजाइक ओके टर्निप मोजाइक एसेट्रा सो बिकॉज ऑफ फंजाई डिजीज में टेक प्लेस बिकॉज ऑफ द वायरसेस डिजीज में टेक प्लेस बिकॉज ऑफ द बैक्टीरिया ऑल्सो डिजीज में टेक प्लेस सो दीज एग्जांपल्स आर इंपॉर्टेंट ओके नाउ सो वट वट आर द डिफरेंट मेथड्स टू परफॉर्म ब्रीडिंग to create or develop a plant which will be disease resistant okay remember one thing whatever the purpose uh, whatever the, uh, our purpose is for uh, in the process of plant breeding the main steps or the basic steps which we follow in the process of plant breeding will be same that means the process which we use to uh, to develop a plant with higher yield will be same as uh, 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 as compared to the Uh, or i can say as compared to the process of plant breeding which we use to make plant which will be having uh, which will be resistant to disease or pathogen uh, or uh, disease or pathogens okay so the basic steps are always going to be same the basic steps are always going to be same okay now the the breeding is carried out by the conventional plant breeding see to make to make disease resistant plants we have two options we have two choices one is one is conventional plant breeding technique second is mutation breeding second is mutation breeding okay so these are con one is conventional plant breeding and second is mutation breeding these are the two different ways two different methods by which we can develop plant which will be resistant to diseases or pathogens okay and this conventional plant breeding method will be similar to that of the other plant breeding methods the steps will be similar okay so and that is why it is written its steps are essentially identical to those for breeding for any other agronomic characters such as yield okay and the various sequential steps during the process of what develop, developing disease resistant plant are screening of germplasm okay for resistant sources then hybridization of the selected parents then selection and the evolution of hybrid, hybrids and testing and release of the new varieties same steps same steps we follow okay and these are some of the crops okay and uh, and these are some of the varieties of those crops and these are, and uh, these varieties are resistant to diseases various diseases okay for example wheat uh, if i take the crop crop plant wheat okay so the variety of the wheat uh, wheat is himgiri and this himgiri is resistant to leaf stripe rust and hill bunt okay mustard so one of the variety of the mustard is uh, pusa uh pusa sarvnin and it is it is resistant to white rust okay and chili if i take the uh, if i take the crop chili so one of the one of the varieties is pusa okay pusa sada bahar so it is resistant to chili mosaic virus tmb leaf curl okay so you have to remember all these examples now but this but this conventional plant breeding to develop a plant with to plant uh, plant having resistance to diseases is uh, has some limitations why why it is limited why it is has why is it has why just a minute very sorry everyone actually uh, i am facing some problem health issues also that is why uh, i stopped anyways let's start then so to develop a plant so to develop a plant which will be resistant to pathogens or disease we have two different options first we can use conventional plant breeding second is mutation breeding so this conventional plant breeding has some limitations why does it has uh, does it have some limitations because in a plant suppose there is a plant which is resistant to some certain pathogens that will be having some genes and those res those genes will be responsible for that resistance okay but the number of genes found in uh, resistant plants are very few in number so it is because their number is very few that is why it is very difficult to find out which genes are responsible for providing or or for conferring resistance to, to a plant against the pathogens okay so i can and that is why i will write here that this conventional plant breeding 
is often constrained by the availability of limited number of genes limited number of what genes which are responsible which are responsible for providing resistance to disease diseases or pathogens okay and because that number is very limited very few in number such genes which are responsible for providing resistance to uh, resistance against pathogens or disease because that number is is very limited or few that is why it is difficult to uh, difficult to identify such genes and if we are not able to identify which genes are responsible for responsible for conferring such resistance it is difficult it will be obviously difficult to difficult to uh, difficult to what uh, conduct the further steps in the process of plant breeding okay so and th that is why we follow mutation breeding so in mutation breeding we we artificially induce some mutation in plants okay and that that mutation will ultimately make that plant resistant to plant uh, resistant to the pathogens and such plant breeding in which we we artificially perform mutation uh, mutation in a plant and that mutated plant will be resistant to some pathogens pathogens or diseases that kind of mutation is known as is known as that that kind of uh, plant breeding is known as mutation breeding okay mutation breeding so muta why mutation is done one to induce resistance against pathogens resistance against pathogens second why this why this mutation is done to identify which genes are responsible for responsible for uh, responsible for disease resistance okay so i will write here that what is what are the different purposes of purposes of mutations the first purpose the first purpose is to is to identify identify genes which are responsible for disease resistance or pathogen resistance so to so to identify we perform mutation what is the second purpose of this mutation to make plants to make plants resistance to disease or pathogens okay so these are the two main reasons uh, main reasons because of what we perform mutation during the process of plant breeding and whenever we when whenever we develop a resistant plant against the disease by inducing mutation that that kind of plant breeding is known as mutation breeding okay that is what i have written over here and when we perform artificially mutation when we induce artificial mutation that can be done by using either chemicals or by using certain physical agents like radiations and which radiation is used to induce mutation it is the gamma radiation it is the gamma radiation okay and when we perform mutation and we obtain a plant which is resistant to resistant to disease that that kind of mutation is known as that kind of breeding is known as mutation breeding that is what i have written over here okay and some of the examples you can see here in mong bing resistant to yellow mosaic virus and powdery mildew are were introduced by mutations okay another example of mutation breeding is resistance to uh, or, or disease resistant uh, disease resistant plant is what uh, parbhani kranti parbhani kranti is the type of what bhindi it is a type of bhindi okay so resistance to yellow mosaic virus in bhindi was transferred from a wild species and result, resulted in a new variety a esculentus called parbhani kranti okay so no, no normal normal bhindi is is sensitive is sensitive or susceptible to the yellow mosaic virus but but we can transfer the gene which is responsible for this tm which is responsible for yellow mosaic virus not tmv ymv ymv in a in a normal plant and we can introduce that resistant property okay and the example is parbhani kranti okay now so the plant breeding can also be done also be done to make the plant resistant to pests or insects okay normally to to keep our plants away from the pest or the insect we use pesticide or insecticide and again these are chemicals and whenever we use, whenever we use chemicals that will pollute our soil that will 
cause the death of some other organisms and that is why we should avoid using chemicals okay and that is why we that is why we will try to develop such plants which will be naturally which will be naturally resistant to the pest or pet, uh, pest or the insects okay and the insect the uh, sorry and the resistance against the pest or insect in plants can be it can be physiological it can be morphological or it can be biochemical okay and some of the examples are there here mentioned in the ncrt so when we talk about some plants which which are, which are having hairy leaves those plants will be resistant to insects or pests why because the insects or pests they will go and they will infect the plant only if damage the plant only if the leaves are broad in nature but if the leaves are very hairy in nature then such then the insect or pest they cannot go and sit on the leaves and they cannot uh, they cannot <coughs> damage the plant okay so the presence of hairy leaves will will allow the plant to become resistant to insect or pest and such and such type of resistance is known as morphological morphological resistance okay example you can see jessids in cotton resistance to jessids in cotton or cereal leaf cereal leaf beetle in wheat these are the examples of what these are examples of what uh, the resistance uh, resistance against insect or pests okay due to morphological features in wheat uh, in wheat solid stem led to non non preference uh, non preference by the stems of fly and smooth lived and nectar less cotton red is do not attract ball worms so these you can sorry you can see these are the examples of what resistance against insects or pests okay and there are some plants and if it, and if there are some plants like maize so in maize plant if the aspartic acid content is high okay and if the nitrogen content is low and the sugar content is low then in that case what will happen that the plant will be that maize plant will be resistant to the stem stem borers okay so stem borer will go and infect the maize plant only if only if the aspartic acid is low and if the nitrogen content is high and if the sugar content is uh, sugar content is high then only the stem borer will go and infect the maize plant but if if sugar and nitrogen content are low and aspartic acid is high then the stem borer will avoid to go and infect that plant okay so you can see and the, the this type of this type of resistance is known as what biochemical resistance biochemical resistance so the resistance against pests or insects can be morphological can be biochemical or can be can be physiological okay so you can see some of the examples are given over here okay so brassica brassica is the crop okay and the variety which is resistant to the pest is pusa gaurav and it is and it is and it is resistance against the aphids okay so you can learn this example learn this table okay so uh, not only we do not only we do the we perform the plant breeding to increase the yield but also we perform the plant breeding to increase the quality of the food quality of not only quantity but also the quality is also quality considered during the plant breeding okay so more than why uh, so more than more than more than 840 million people in the world they do not have they do not have sufficient amount of food adequate amount of food okay and a far greater number that means uh, a far greater greater number that is about 3 billion people 3 billion people they do not get food which will have proper amount of micronutrient okay proper amount of protein and proper amount of vitamins that means about 3 billion people they suffer from micronutrient protein and vitamin deficiency okay they get food but that food will not have the proper amount of this this and this and such persons are said to be suffering from hidden hunger hidden hunger so why do they suffer from such hidden hunger because they do not have enough amount of money to purchase good quality food okay they do not have sufficient amount of money to to purchase food like fruits vegetables legumes fishes meats okay Th these things these things will be having the proper amount of micronutrient protein and vitamins okay and that is why and and that is why uh, uh, and diets lacking essential micronutrients particularly iron vitamin I didn't and zinc they increase the risk of disease and reduce lifespan and reduce mental abilities okay so having food is not enough the food quality should be good 
if the food quality is not good that means if the food is uh, very less in, less in iron or very less uh, less amount of vitamin a is there or very less iodine or zinc are there then that person will be will be very very susceptible to disease and that automatically the lifespan of that person will decrease and that person's mental ability will also not grow properly okay and that is why we should have we should uh, we should grow such crops which will be having good quality food which good quality food nutrient okay and the process and the process by which we develop plants which will be having higher level of higher level of vitamins higher amount of minerals or higher amount of proteins uh, or fats that process is known as biofortification biofortification so in biofortification we try to increase we try to increase the quality quality of the food how do we increase the quality of the food by increasing the amount of vitamins okay amount of minerals minerals means more specifically micronutrient okay and amount of proteins and healthier fats okay and uh, you can see here uh, again it is written over here in biofortification what do we do we try to improve the protein content and quality in the food we try to improve improve the oil content and quality that means protein amount and quality quantity and quality lipid uh, oil means lipid lipid amount and qu quantity and quality vitamin quantity only okay because because vitamin for vitamin we are not going to uh, we, we are not going for the quality okay because the quality is always going to be same and the amount of micronutrient and mineral content so these are the things which should be improved to have proper amount of pro proper food okay proper quality of food so some of the examples are given here about the about the biofortification so in 2000 in 2000 maize hybrids were developed okay and those maize hybrids had about twice amount of amino acids amino acids which amino acids lysine and arginine so lysine and tryptophan as compared to the pre-existing maize maize plants okay so in maize plants uh, sorry in 2000 such maize maize hybrids were developed which had about twice amount of amino acids lysine and tryptophan as compared to the pre-existing maize plants okay so these uh, this data you have to remember what about wheat one of the example of wheat which was developed by biofortification was atlas 66 and in atlas 66 the protein content is very very high the protein content is very very high okay and uh, and uh, one example is there for uh, what uh, rice is there okay it is written iron fortified rice iron fortified rice so iron fortified rice means that rice, rice plant will be having higher amount of iron okay so in india agriculture research institute new delhi has also released several vegetable crops that are rich in vitamin and minerals and these are the examples these are the examples okay vitamin a enriched carrots spinach pumpkin vitamin c enriched bitter gourd batwa mustard tomato iron and calcium enriched spinach batwa protein enriched bean and examples are broad lab lab french and garden peas okay so these are these are the examples of what biofortification so biofortification means this is the process in which we develop plants or the crop uh, crops which will be having quality good quality food and how the good quality the quality of food will be good the protein content will be good the nature and uh, the, the lipid lipid uh, lipid quality and quantity will be good okay and the vitamin content will be more and and the uh, and the nutrient micronutrient amount will also be more okay so this is how we do the we we increase the quality of the food the quality of the food okay now what about single cell protein what about single cell protein the conventional agricultural production of cereals pulses vegetables fruits etc may not be able to meet the demand of the food at the rate at which human and animal populations are increasing okay so human and animal population they are increasing at a very high high pace okay and to meet their food requirement uh, the common agricultural production of cereal pulses or vegetables or food will not be may not be able to meet the requirement or the demand okay and and if we if we shift from vegetables to the meat that will also not be a solution why because because to produce 
बिकॉज बिकॉज टू प्रोड्यूस वन के जी ऑफ मीट वी हैव टू फीड द एनिमल विथ अबाउट टेन के जी ऑफ ग्रेन टेन के जी ऑफ ग्रेन ओके एंड दैट इज वाई वी कैन इफ वी से दैट वी से दैट द क्रॉप प्लांट इफ वी इंक्रीज इफ वी इंक्रीज द Yield of the crop plants that will increase the, that will satisfy the or uh, meet the requirement of food by the animals and human being. That is not that is that that won't be possible. Why? Because why? Because ten kg of grains. Because ten kg of grains will sorry, very sorry, very sorry. I want to say that uh, the conventional agriculture production th that means the production of cereals, vegetables, what we get by using conventional plant breeding is not sufficient. is not sufficient to meet the requirement of food by the human being and by the other animal population okay so so should those animals and human being be shifting from the vegetables or plant products to the animals no this is not the solution why because to produce because to produce 1 kg of meat by animal farming we should feed those animals at least 10 10 kg of grain that means here we are again going more loss okay and that is why this is not the answer so the answer is single cell protein so by single cell protein we can increase the we can increase the what uh, increase the production of proteins okay why protein is required because if a if a food If if some food is not uh, not having proper amount of protein, that food is not good. That is why we require protein-rich food. Okay, and a production of protein-rich food is an example of what biofortification, right? So, uh, biofortification and uh, the single cell proteins. The single cell proteins they also provide they also provide what uh, protein-rich uh, pro high amount of protein. so what do you actually understand by this single cell protein single cell protein is not, nothing but those microbes those microbes which will be having higher amount of higher amount of proteins they will be having lipids they will be having carbohydrates but the protein content content will be very very high so any organism which has higher amount of proteins and those organisms are microbes those microbes are called as single cell proteins single cell proteins okay and the examples of single cell proteins are spirulina okay spirulina and chlorella spirulina and chlorella so the examples of single cell proteins are what spirulina which is an example of what blue green algae okay another example is chlorella which is an example of what green algae okay so both of these are unicellular both of these are unicellular and because they are unicellular in nature they come under microbe okay and and uh, they are protein rich and that is why they are considered as single cell protein okay and wh when i talk about this spirulina they can they can be grown easily on the material like waste water from the potato processing plants okay and straw molasses animal manure even on the sewage okay and these spirulina will produce large quantity of protein large quantity of protein not only they they are going to pr 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 produce large amount of protein they will also have large amount of uh, minerals fat carbohydrate and vitamins but here we are focusing on the proteins we, here we are focusing on the proteins okay it has been calculated that so for uh, here one question may come into your mind that for protein why should we go for the microbes why not larger animals the answer is here so to so if i take one cow which is which 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 has 250 kg weight then that 250 kg weighing cow will produce will produce only 200 grams of protein per day only 200 grams of protein per day so such a large cow is producing such small amount of protein per day so the rate of production is very very low in case of cow that means in case of larger animals but if i take the example of some microbes like a bacterium uh, and the bacterium is methylophilus methylotrophus it can by using this by using this uh, microbe and if i take 250 g only 250 g of if i take this bacteria if i take only 250 g of this bacteria then i can produce i can produce about 25 tons of protein 25 tons of protein here you see 250 kg cow only 200 g of protein per day but if i take a very small amount of bacteria very small amount of microbe i can i can produce such large amount of protein 
ट्वेंटी फाइव टन ऑफ प्रोटीन आई कैन गेट एंड दैट इज वाई फॉर प्रोटीन वी डू नॉट गो फॉर द लार्जर ऑर्गेनिजम्स वी गो फॉर द माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स ओके एंड दोज माइक्रोव विच विच प्रोड्यूस लार्जर अमाउंट ऑफ प्रोटीन्स दे आर सेल दे आर कॉल्ड एज सिंगल सेल प्रोटीन्स दे आर कॉल्ड एज सिंगल सेल प्रोटीन्स ओके द फैक्ट दैट द मशरूम्स आर इटन बाय द मेनी बाय मेनी पीपल एंड लार्ज लार्ज स्केल मशरूम कल्चर इज ग्रोइंग इंडस्ट्री मेक्स इट बिलीवल दैट माइक्रोब्स टू वुड बी बिकम एक्सेप्टेबल एज फूड वी नो दिस वेरिएबल राइट सो वी वी ऑल लव टू हैव मशरूम्स राइट so mushroom comes under the basidiomycetes and basidiomycetes is an example of fungus and uh, and it, it comes under the microbe so we are actually using microbe as food now okay and uh, we believe that with time with time what will happen the use of microbes as food will also increase okay now we are going to discuss the last part of this chapter and that is tissue culture so what do you understand by tissue culture tissue culture is a process in which we maintain or grow either cell or tissue or organ or embryo or entire organism that process of maintenance or growing of any of these structures cells tissues organ or, or uh, entire organism or embryo under aseptic condition microbe free condition that maintenance or the growing process is a technique is known as tissue culture i repeat any process any technique which allows us either to grow or to maintain something under aseptic condition microbe free condition that is known as tissue culture so what are the things which we maintain or grow in the tissue culture cells or tissues or organ embryo or entire organism okay and the uh, 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 let me repeat that part once again aseptic condition means microbe free condition microbe free conditions okay so uh, so in the, in the in the tissue culture technique we use medium so what is medium actually medium means the plural of medium is media okay so medium is basically the food it is going to it is something which is going to provide food to the explant the explant can be anything it it can be anything i will explain you what is explant okay so here i am going to explain you some of the terms here i am going to explain you some of the terms okay so in tissue culture in tissue culture what do we do in tissue culture we either grow something or we maintain something okay so what are the things which are grown or maintained the things are they can be cells they can be tissue that can be tissue that can be embryo that can be organ or that can be entire organism that can be entire organism so where do we grow or maintain these things in the aseptic condition so what do you understand by aseptic condition aseptic condition aseptic condition means microbe free condition this means microbe free condition okay and this aseptic condition will be there in the nutrient medium okay so another term which we are going to consider here is the medium okay and the plural of this medium term medium is media okay this medium is basically going to provide nourishment or food to cells or tissues or embryo or organ or organism okay so this is basically food okay and this nutrient medium this nutrient medium will be having it will have some carbon source and that carbon source will be used by cells or tissues or embryo or whatever we are growing in the aseptic medium okay and the carbon source which is used normally in the form of sucrose okay and in the in this nutrient medium we will also use we will also use some hormones okay which hormones we are going to use we are going to use auxin and cytokinin we are going to use auxin and cytokine both are going to be used okay then we are also going to use uh, use some vitamins in the in the in the nutrient medium we are also going to use some minerals okay and we are also going to add some amino acids amino acids 
okay and so these are uh, th these are some of the things which are added in the nutrient medium so nutrient medium is nothing but the food which is used by the ex plant during its growth or maintenance that is known as medium the plural is media okay and this medium should be aseptic this, this should be sterilized so let me tell you another term which is known as sterilization sterilization so what do you understand by sterilization so sterilization Sterilization is basically a process of making the condition microbe free or I can say killing of micro microorganisms that is known as sterilization. Okay, so here what do we do? We kill the microbes, kill the undesirable microbes. Killing of microbes. Okay, or, or I can say undesirable microbes. That is known as sterilization, and the, 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 there are different methods, different methods for sterilization, and the methods are, and some of the examples of the sterilization methods are, are autoclave, okay, surface sterilization, etc. Okay, and when I talk about this autoclave, this is done. For this is done for glassware. That means I can say this is done for flasks, test tubes. This is done for what? This is done for uh, this is done for the uh, done for the nutrient medium. Okay, surface sterilization is done for the explant. For the explant, okay. So, uh, so what do you understand by surface sterilization? Then surface sterilization. Suppose this is the, suppose this is the explant, okay. So on the surface of the ex explant, microbes will be there. So I will rub this explant with the alcohol. So the alcohol when I rub the when I uh, rub this surface of this uh, explant by alcohol, then what will happen? The microbes present on the surface will become dead. That is known as surface sterilization. Okay, now, so you may ask me, what is uh, what is explant then? What is explant then? So any li any living part which we take to grow, uh, which we which we take uh, during the starting point of the tissue culture, that is known as explant. Okay, so suppose you are going, to, suppose you are taking a small fragment of uh, segment of uh, what stem or leaf or root and you are going to grow a and uh, grow in uh, grow it into a new plant so that segment of that segment of uh, stem or root or leaf that that will be called or uh, even embryo that will be called as explant so anything which is used from the very beginning uh, which is used to start the tissue culture that is known as explant okay so i can write here anything which is used start tissue culture that is explant okay it can be and it has to be always living it has to be always living it has to be always living it must be living okay and this can be a segment of this can be a segment of stem or leaf or root or even embryo embryo etc so anything anything which we take during the starting point of tissue culture that is known as explant and it must be living in nature and this entire process of tissue culture is based on one phenomenon that is known as totipotency So what do you understand by totipotency? Totipotency is basically the ability of a cell to produce all the different types of cells present in a in an in an adult body. 
that means this is the ability of a cell to produce the entire plant body entire adult body that is known as totipotency okay so let me write here this is the ability of a cell to produce the whole adult body body or you can say to produce all types of cells present in adult body that is known as totipotency okay and the plant living cells they are totipotent in nature they can produce the entire plant body okay now now uh, let me tell you one more thing okay so if suppose this is a culture medium suppose this is a test tube okay let me take some test tube over here So here I'm making some test tube. I'm taking some test tube over here. Okay, and here I'm taking the nutrient medium. Okay, and the nutrient medium can be solid, can be liquid, can be semi-solid. And the liquid medium can be made semi-solid or solid by adding the agar. Okay, the how much it will be solidified that will depend upon the amount of agar we add. Okay, so suppose this is nutrient medium. So suppose this is nutrient medium. Okay, and in this nutrient medium, the amount of auxin is suppose uh, equal to the amount of cytokinin. Okay, so here the amount of auxin is equal to amount of cytokinin, and here I am taking some explant. So suppose this is a one explant. This is one explant. Okay, so this explant it can be it can be a segment of stem, it can be a segment of uh, root or leaf, anything. It can be anything. Okay, and the process and the process in which we transfer the explant, in which we transfer the explant into the culture medium, into the culture medium, that process of transferring is known as is known as inoculation. So, what do you understand by inoculation? Inoculation is basically the process of transfer of explant into the culture medium. That transfer process is inoculation. So, once we transfer the explant into the culture medium, we provide specific conditions. to this entire complex okay and providing this uh, specific conditions like specific temperature specific hum humidity okay this pro this process of providing specific conditions is known as incubation that process is called as incubation incubation okay transfer process is inoculation okay providing specific conditions is known as inoculation okay so you so you are going to take this one okay you provided specific conditions to this one so now what is going to happen <coughs> now this is the explant okay now from this explant what is going to develop the callus is going to develop which one is going to develop the callus is going to develop so suppose uh, <coughs> suppose this is the callus so the callus is going to develop the callus is going to develop so you may ask me sir what is callus callus is basically mass of unorganized undifferentiated cells that is callus mass of unorganized un undifferentiated cells so when the callus is going to develop if the if the nutrient medium has same amount of auxin as compared to cytokine in that case callus will develop now what are you going to do now you are going to transfer this callus into another medium you are going to transfer this callus into another medium or this this medium into another medium okay so first of all you will take you will take this entire structure okay you will you can you can remove the explant with the callus we, you you can separate the explant with the, from the callus okay and now we are going to transfer this callus into another fresh medium another fresh medium okay so suppose let me take another fresh medium here okay so suppose this is another fresh medium another medium and that is why i am using different colors 
okay so what are you going to transfer here we are going to transfer here what callus so this is callus okay and the process uh, process in which we i am transferring something from one medium to another medium that is known as subculture that is known as subculture so here this is known as subculture this is known as subculture okay so we have transferred this callus to another fresh medium and in this medium the suppose the amount of oxygen is less than amount of cytokinin in this medium okay so if and then we will incubate this one we will incubate this one so incubation is done specific conditions will be provided so after incubation what will happen let me draw this one okay so this is the culture medium in which the amount of oxygen is less than amount of cytokinin right now what is going to happen so this is the this is the uh, this is the callus so from this callus now the shoot system will develop which one is going to develop shoot system is going to develop so this is the shoot system okay so this is the shoot system adventitious shoot system is going to develop okay now you are going to transfer this one you are going to transfer this one from this culture medium to another culture medium so this is this is also going to be called as subculture this is also going to be called as subculture okay and here i am taking some another medium so suppose this is the culture medium okay and in this culture medium suppose in this culture medium suppose the amount of oxygen is more as compared to amount of cytokinin okay so you have transferred what callus which had developed the shoot system okay and now we are going to incubate this one we are going to incubate this one okay so here i'm performing i'm doing the incubation i'm going i'm providing specific conditions i'm providing specific conditions okay so this is the uh, test tube okay now this is the culture medium right and here in this culture medium amount of oxygen is more than amount of cytokinin right so now what is going to happen okay so this was the callus previously okay and this was the shoot system now what is going to happen the root will develop adventitious root will develop so root will develop okay and this entire complex is now called as plantlet this entire complex is known as plantlet what do you call this one as this one as plantlet okay and this one is adventitious root adventitious root so when the adventitious root is going to form if oxygen is more if cytokinin is more then shoot is going to develop if both are same then callus is going to form callus is going to form okay so this is how we do this one so ultimately from the explant that means from a segment of root leaf or leaf, uh, whatever we take from this i'm i have obtained a plant small plant which plant and that plant is called as plantlet okay and this plantlet cannot be grown on the farmers in the farmers field directly why because in the farmers field the conditions are extreme unfavorable and that is why we will allow this plantlet to develop the resistant to the environmental conditions and the process of developing that resistance is known as hardening what do you call that as hardening okay so then what do we do we do hardening so what do you mean by hardening this is the process in which the plantlet develops the resistant ability to grow uh, against the environmental conditions harsh conditions stressful conditions like drought or salinity or pathogens etc etc okay and how this is done by growing this plantlet under low temperature and high humidity low temperature and high humidity okay so, to be more specific i will say high humidity okay and once the plantlet is hardened then that plantlet can be grown on the farmer's field okay so this is all about tissue culture so tissue culture is basically based on a property of a cell and that property is known as totipotency what do you mean by totipotency this is the property of a cell by which the cell can produce all types of cells present in the adult body okay that means it can produce the whole plant that is known as totipotency okay and we grow the and what do you mean by tissue culture tissue culture is a process in which either grow something or maintain something 
there's something can be cell there's something can be uh, entire organism okay that uh, organism can be um, macro organism or micro organism the, or we can take the embryo we can take tissue we can take organ okay and uh, whenever we grow uh, grow or uh, maintain these things we grow them in the culture medium and the culture medium has to be aseptic okay aseptic means micro free and the process in which we we develop or we develop the aseptic condition that is known as sterilization okay sterilization and the sterilization can be done by various methods two methods i have given here autoclave and surface sterilization okay in autoclave we 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 increase the temperature we increase the temperature in a, in a machine which is also known as autoclave okay and that increase in the temperature will kill the microbes present uh, my, on the test tubes or flask or nutrient medium okay on surface sterilization we we uh, we rub the uh, surface of the explant or whatever we want to sterilize okay by 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 uh, by alcohol or some other chemicals okay so only for explant we we do not use surface lesson for test tube also we can we can use surface sterilization but for explant we cannot use autoclave because autoclaving of explant will cause the uh, will cause the death of the explant will cause the death of the explant okay so that is why let me write here and and i can take explant i can take flasks okay i can take test tubes i can use all this okay for medium i will not use surface lesson medium for, for medium i will not use surface sterilization and for explant i will not use autoclave okay and what is explant anything which is used to start the tissue culture is known as explant and it has to be living in nature okay and uh, it can be a segment of uh, it can be any part of the plant it can be any part of the plant or it can be bacteria also it can be yeast also it can be anything okay and now now let me tell you one more thing that is somatic hybridization somatic hybridization so if i take two protoplasts and if i fuse these two cells i will get new cell okay and that new cell will be called as hybrid that will be called as hybrid so suppose i am having two plants two plants okay and now i am not going to uh, i am not going to take flowers from these plants and hybridize them i am going to take two cells of these plants suppose this plant has some uh, characters which i prefer and suppose another plant this this plant also has got some features which i prefer so i'm going to take cells from these two plants okay I, I will isolate the protoplast and i will fuse them okay and after fusing the cells which i will get that will have all those genes which will be responsible for all those characters which i prefer and that process is known as somatic hybridization okay so in somatic hybridization what we do first we uh, we take these cells okay so let me write that part here in somatic hybridization in somatic hybridization first of all we are going to we are going to take cells we are going to take cells so suppose this is one cell this is another cell these are the two cells okay and the plant cells will have cell wall the plant cells will have cell wall so suppose this, these are the cell wall these are the cell wall okay so let me write here suppose this is cell a and suppose this is cell b and these cells are of same species these cells are of same species okay now i'm going to remove this cell wall i'm going to remove this cell wall okay so cell wall is removed what is removed cell wall is removed cell wall is removed and we know the cell wall is mainly made of cellulose and it also has pectin so if to digest the pectin and cellulose i will add cellulose and pectinase okay so uh, how do, uh, how do i remove this uh, cell wall by using cellulose and pectinase cellulose and pectinase okay so if i add cellulose or pectinase then what will happen the cell wall will break down so now i will have i will have the plasma membrane only so only plasma membrane will be there only plasma membrane will be there okay so now 
this one is not uh, this one is not called a cell this one is called as protoplast so this is this will be protoplast a and this will be protoplast b protoplast a and protoplast b and both of these they will have nucleus they will have nucleus okay so suppose suppose this is the nucleus these are the nucleus apart from the nucleus so this will have the nucleus this will have the nucleus so for nucleus i uh, let me write here let me write here this is this is nucleus a n for nucleus okay and this is the nucleus of cell b nucleus of cell b okay and here i will also have the cytoplasm i will also have the cytoplasm right so suppose this is the cytoplasm this is the cytoplasm okay and suppose here i am taking the cytoplasm this is the cytoplasm okay now i am going to fuse i am going to fuse these two protoplasts i am going to fuse these two protoplasts okay so here i'm going to fuse these two protoplasts okay and this few after when i fuse these two protoplasts i will get a cell like this okay so in this case in this case what will be there in this case cytoplasm will be there of these two protoplasts okay so let me draw, draw the protoplast of, of uh, cytoplasm of this protoplast so th these are the cytoplasm of this cell okay now let me draw the cytoplasm of this protoplast also so here i'm having the cytoplasm of this this protoplast okay now the nucleus of these two pro uh, two protoplast also be there okay so here let me draw the nucleus so this is the nucleus this is another nucleus okay so this one is having this one is having nucleus of cell a or protoplast a and nucleus of cell b or protoplast b this is nucleus a and this is nucleus b and this cell is called as som is called as somatic hybrid or hybrid so what is hybrid cell a soma uh, and these are two somatic cells these are two somatic cells so this will be called as somatic hybrid cell okay and the somatic hybrid cell has cytoplasm of both cells and nucleus of both cells that is known as somatic hybrid okay and this fusion of these two protoplast can be done by uh, uh, ele electric pulses uh, electric pulses uh, uh, electric current of short pulses or by using some chemicals accordingly we classify that as electrofusion or chemofusion okay so the fusion of the the fusion of the fusion of the protoplast the fusion of the protoplast can be electrofusion or chemofusion so when i use some chemicals to fuse the protoplast that will be called as chemofusion if i uh, if i keep these two protoplasts they will not fuse uh, automatically we have to induce this fusion and this induction of the fusion can be done by some chemicals that is that will that will be called as chemofusion and the example of the chemical which is used for chemofusion is peg polyethylene glycol okay or i can also use electric current of short pulses electric current of short pulses okay so this is somatic hybridization so these are somatic cells and these two somatic cells they can be allowed to fuse with each other only if their cell wall is removed because this because the presence of the cell wall will prevent the fusion of these two cells okay so uh, these are the protoplasts okay and they are allowed to fuse with each other okay and the example of such somatic uh, hybrid cell is is uh, suppose th th suppose this is this one is potato potato cell and suppose this one is tomato cell okay so this cell this cell will be pomato cell so this cell will have so from this cell the plant which we will obtain will have the properties of both potato as well as tomato okay so this is all about tissue culture this is all about tissue culture hope you understood this one and very sorry because uh, because i had some stomach pain and some other things because of that i was uh, 
I was pausing the video in between. But I wish all the best for your exam and for your preparation. Take care. Thank you.